This is a ship out at sea with a suspicious trail, most likely a toxic mix of oily wastewater, chemicals and detergents. Cargo vessels produce several tons of this noxious brew every day. It's spilled water from the engine room that is supposed to be treated on board and then disposed of on land. But DW and its media partners have found that many crews don't comply with these international regulations. With the help of a small pump, the mix is often sent into the sewage tank and then out to sea. Few seafarers dare to speak out, those who do risk their jobs and ultimately their careers. Uh, it is expected that everyone will silently participate in it. And um, it did happen in the night and it was diluted with water so that, uh, you know, it, uh, so that it becomes even easier to hide it. Bilge dumping is the shipping industry's dirty secret. The reasons are financial. Every delay in this tight margin business costs money. But there is another way to find bilge water spills. Satellites. Trawling through images, environmental watchdog SkyTruth identified more than 1,500 potentially illegal dumps around the globe over the course of 18 months. It's Anna Karina Zirpen's job to catch these offenders. The police officer in Hamburg inspects incoming container vessels. Unfortunately, in Hamburg, we don't get information from whistleblowers for us to investigate. That just doesn't happen. Another problem is that spills quickly dissipate, making them hard to verify. But even if they are no longer visible, the oil droplets are ingested by marine organisms like plankton. Fish larvae, for example, are very sensitive to toxins. When exposed to oil, they become deformed. In some cases, it's fatal. Whether the pollution moves all the way up the food chain is still being studied. Oil is a mixture of several hundred different chemicals and compounds. And these are toxics. And if animals and plants are getting in contact with, with oil, the, this is very dangerous. Experts all agree on one thing. The less contaminated water ends up in the ocean, the better. But with tens of thousands of cargo vessels out at sea at any given moment, policing them all is next to impossible. For more on this, I'm now joined by Max Bernhard. He's a journalist and a researcher and one of the lead authors of this investigation. Welcome uh, to the studio, Max. We heard of reportedly 1,500 bilge dumping sites in the last 18 months. How big is this problem? It must be massive. Yeah, um, it's very difficult to estimate the total uh, size of this problem um, because the crimes happen out at sea, uh, away from anyone's eyes. Um, but using satellite imagery, we caught a glimpse of what the total figure is. Um, so um, the satellites we used only capture about one-fifth of the world's oceans. Mm. That means there's still a much larger dark figure of spills happening. Um, SkyTruth, the environmental NGO, um, estimates that the total amount globally could be as high as five times the Exxon Valdez uh, oil spill, which was one of the worst um, environmental disasters um, to date. Mm. Max, um, tell us about the main obstacles you encountered during this investigation. Um, uh, it's uh, what I just mentioned already, um, it happens out at sea, so um, it's very difficult to sort of get an inside look at what's happening aboard a ship. Um, what we tried to do is find several whistleblowers, um, and one of the obstacles was also um, getting them to talk, because um, people who speak out are being blacklisted. Um, they told us they're afraid of um, not being able to find work anymore. Um, which is why um, 
uh, none of them spoke to us um, with their name. We had to anonymize the um, accounts. Yeah. Max, um, as you mentioned, it doesn't take sophisticated technology to circumvent these environmental rules. And we also saw that mm -hmm. uh, in the report. It takes a pump and a couple of pipes, from yeah. what I understand. Uh, how are these rules being enforced in an industry that spans the globe and that has so many dark corners, as you, as you mentioned? Um, so the, the laws are set internationally by the International Maritime Organization. Um, but what we found is that enforcement uh, is, differs from country to country. So there are some countries that um, are quite good at enforcing and finding um, polluters. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also hotspots where um, enforcement uh, doesn't happen almost at all. Authorities turn a blind eye, basically. Yeah. Um, so, for example, uh, Indonesia is one of those hotspots. Um, and um, then it also differs what happens when uh, a polluter is found. Um, for example, in Europe, fines can often be quite low, sometimes um, as little as 15,000 euros. Mm. Um, in the US, uh, there's a whistleblower system, um, meaning that um, fines are often as high uh, as the hundreds of millions. And um, whistleblowers get um, a portion of that fine as a reward. So they get their share. Uh, briefly, if you could, are there efforts growing internationally to tackle this problem? Um, so um, there are more and more satellites, which means the sort of area of ocean that's being covered is growing. And it's also becoming cheaper to sort of uh, monitor the oceans 24-7, mm -hmm. um, which isn't happening at the moment. At the moment, um, Satellites can capture an image maybe two to three times a day in the European Union, um, less so uh, in other regions. Um, so when that um, sort of um, coverage increases, then it might become easier for countries to actually enforce it. So technology can help. Journalist Max Bernhardt, thank you for your visit. Thank you.